lovely, lovely imps, I want to take a few minutes to talk about negativity on the internet, okay? I, on this channel, you know, try to talk about how you can live a healthier life on the internet to the best of my ability. It's a very difficult topic, okay? The internet has become a very weird place. The internet is completely different than it was when I first started exploring the internet. For those who don't know, uh, I am 32. So I am I am on the older side of uh, most YouTube communities that, that we know of, um, you know, but I'm, you know, 32 is not that old. But still, I was around when the internet became a thing that people had access to. I was a member of the first generation to actually spend significant amount of time on the internet. Obviously, the internet existed before the 90s, but not in an accessible way. Most people did not have access to the internet. And the internet has changed a lot uh, since I was younger. And I wanted to talk about that just a tiny bit because there's there's actually a lot of relevant information in there. Um, when I first uh, came into contact with the internet, the internet was not a place that anyone lived their lives. It was impossible to use it like that. Um, in fact, most people couldn't stay online for more than, you know, 30 minutes to a few hours at max at the time because when I first got on the internet, you actually had to use your phone line in order to connect to the internet, which meant you couldn't make phone calls. And to the Zoomers in the audience, I know you guys have probably heard about this, but it might seem weird. Nobody had cell phones at that time. Nobody had cell phones. Everybody had landlines. You wouldn't get f phone calls if you weren't at your house. And that's just how life was. You want me to play? You want me to play the sound, the dial-up sound? Sure. Okay, you know what? For nostalgia's sake and for the education of the Zoomers... Here, let me grab this dial-up noise, okay? Here we go, all right? Everybody, here's the sound of the dial-up internet. Here we go. That's what it sounded like, unironically. When you wanted to go on the internet, you would hear that noise because your computer, you would plug your computer into a phone, uh, like a wall socket for your phone, and then it would send, it would automatically send, a, it would dial a phone number, and that would connect the data stream, and you would hear all this weird noise because it was working through the same thing that your phone did. Um, now, None of that really matters except to explain that nobody lived on the internet at that time. It was not feasible. Uh, nobody spent a majority of their time on the internet. No one, okay? Uh, uh, and, and the reason, of course, is partially just limitations, but also because the internet was just used very differently. When you wanted to use the internet, you were going to a specific place. So, for example, some websites I remember from when I was younger. I remember going uh, to the websites for specific video games that I was interested in. I remember one of my earliest memories on the internet was going to the Disney.com, which I was, uh, I, I didn't actually realize was Disney at the time because I was trying to play some Disney related game, but I didn't know it was made by Disney. And on the, on the, the advertisement that I was reading for the game, it had like a, it had Walt Disney's signature. And so I kept typing in Disney, like G, because I didn't know it was a Disney product and they had it, the signature.com. So I didn't, and I, it took me a minute for, to figure out what was actually going on. Um, I didn't know it was Disney. I didn't, it was just, it was a random video game that I saw in an ad that happened to be published by Disney. I don't even remember what the game was. Um, 
So yeah, I kept I, I and I kept getting errors because I I was typing it in. I'm like, what's wrong? And then my dad came over and was like, oh, it's a Disney game. Okay. And then you know he typed in Disney.com HTTPS. You know what? It was HTTP, but whatever. And uh, they didn't have the S at that point. Um. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is that the internet was used like a tool that you would go to a specific place, you would pop on the internet to do a specific thing. Um, and even as the internet grew and more websites existed, uh, you know, it was still uncommon for people to spend like long periods of time on the internet outside of accomplishing a specific thing. Maybe you're going to a website to order something. Maybe you're going to read some information. Maybe you're going to print out uh, uh, in uh, recipes, uh, you know, cause that was one of the big things in the early internet was that you could find recipes from people all over the world. Wow. How exciting. Maybe you were going to print out a guide to do something. Um, and of course, over time this changed and people spent more and more time on the internet, especially, uh, when, uh, alternative forms of connecting to the internet arrived like cable, which is, you know, what most people recognize now as the, the internet that you get in your house. You know, you got your router and your modem and that coax thing goes into the back. Well, that didn't exist at the beginning uh, of, the, of the consumer internet. But when that happened, you know, you didn't have to clog your phone lines anymore. Oh yeah, game, game, uh, game facts, map quest, all kinds of things that people would go to the internet to get and bring back into the real world, uh, so to say. Uh, it was like you were doing a dive. You were putting on your little helmet and you were diving down into the water to get a little thing of treasure and bring it back up to the surface so it could enhance your life in one way or another. And of course, there were some areas like, you know, chat rooms and things like that where people would go to connect, but it was a, it was a lot more of a limited uh, space in a, in a ton of ways. I see now that I've activated a ton of people's nostalgia. Um, and whatever, but uh, I'm, I promise I'm not trying to do a nostalgia thing here. Uh, 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 what I'm going to talk about is actually, you know, particularly functional, and I think it's something that's important for people to think about. Um, the internet was a very different place, um, and it changed really, really fast. Okay, like I mean, crazy fast. The internet changed. Okay. Um, this, the biggest and most drastic change was with the introduction of social media, okay? And of course there were precursors to this, uh, things like instant messengers, um, online video games. I mean, I was, I was in communities for online video games before I was on any sort of social media. So before Facebook or MySpace, I had, I was in like a guild in uh in everquest and uh and world of warcraft and and that kind of stuff so that was like the first social media experience i had an experience with um but uh but but the the social media was a real game changer nothing quite changed everything like social media did um even the precursors to social media, um, like, you know, the comment sections of various websites, uh, like forums, none of these quite had the same effect as, uh, social media did. And sure, there were all kinds of forms of negativity and, uh, bad engagements that people had on, on forums that people had in chat rooms. There was of course, some horror stories of chat rooms of people getting catfished, uh, you know, which is uh, a thing and and all kinds of, you know, scams and all kinds. Of course, there's no one saying there wasn't negative stuff, but but social media changed the game. OK. And we live in a really weird period now as a result of social media um, to the degree that I think that there needs to be a cultural reckoning, like a meaningful, uh, not, you know, not woo woo, not, not trite, uh, reckoning with how much our lives have actually changed in the era of social media. Um, 
And there's so many aspects that could be talked about with this. And in fact, in the segment we're going to be doing after this, I'm going to be talking about how social media changed another aspect of the web when we talk about the Reddit stuff, but that's for the next segment. In this section, I want to talk about interpersonal negativity uh, and general negative negativity on the internet in this section. And I think that a lot of this is directly tied to the rise of social media. Social media uh, was a was a a, a a genuine epical change, okay? Even in the era of forums, even in the era of AIM chats, and even in the, the era of, you know, uh, uh, EverQuest guilds and all of that stuff, there was a real sense of separation between the internet and uh, and your life. Um, and not just because of an anonymity or anything like that, but there was this sense that the internet was like a place that you visited and you would bring something out that would enhance your life in one way or another or that would, that would affect your life in one way or another. And now it's almost inverted. The, the real world in so many ways for so many people has uh, basically become the place that you do things that ultimately are going to engage in social media. Some people call this terminally online, um, but the truth is that a lot of people live like this now, um, and especially young people, where the real world, the world that they physically exist in, uh, to borrow from Bo Burnham, is just a stage where you know you're gonna go and set up your next little bit or your next little thing for your shot at internet attention. Um, yeah, the real world has become like a content mine for online, and it's a really messed up inversion. It's a a truly deranged inversion of life, um, where uh, where uh, e everything has become. Uh, a, a prop to ultimately service the real you, which is lived online in these vague and horrifically abusive social spaces. And that brings us to the negativity thing, the, the horrific abuse, okay? I've been a streamer for over three years now, which is a wild thing to think about. And in my time, I have had some pretty messed up experiences uh, uh, doing this whole line of work. Um, some of you were here with me through the most fucked up stuff. Others of you have no idea. It's a matter of the past, the stuff that I went through when I first started streaming. Um, but... Becoming a streamer has basically, uh, it totally changed the way that I look at a lot of things. And it exposed me to a level of negativity, um, just deranged negativity, not even like critiques of my stuff, um, not even like uh, just, uh, you know, not even just people not liking me. I'm talking about the type of, uh, I'm talking about stalking. I'm talking about, um, people that I've never, you know, that I barely knew or don't know who, who have become obsessed with me in the most negative ways imaginable and the people that I am connected to. Um, and this is weirdly common. Like, it's not even just, uh, you know, public figures like myself who is making a show for people to enjoy, who talks about topics, who talks about uh, uh, the goings on of other uh, you know, public figures, there are, um, uh, there are, there are people who obsess over one another on the internet, people who they've never had any physical contact with, with in any way, and probably never will, maybe ideally never will. Um, and also this leads, it's like a mass, there's like a mass dissociative effect. And I don't mean that in the psychological, specifically in the psychological effect. I mean that in the sense that like people live a life on the internet that that is totally disconnected from their reality and yet 
uh, whether they acknowledge it or not, absolutely affects their reality, but their mind is in like a separate place. Um, and God, it is, uh, there's a lot of deranged behavior that I witness between people to one another. And look, I'm not a perfect person. You know, I've been mean to people who I probably shouldn't have been mean to. Um, you know, I've gone too hard on some people when I'm talking with other people, but I don't think I've ever once engaged in the type of behavior that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that go, that, bo that goes into this like weird obsessive, um, connection to somebody uh, that goes beyond parasocial. I don't think I've ever even come close to any of that. And it's something that I have to run up, run up into on a regular basis. And, and even in this space, this is like the space that I exist in, the people that I'm connected to in this space are, aren't the only example of this. There are so many communities on the internet and places, places on the internet that don't really exist in any real way, but that nonetheless absorb people's entire lives into it. And I've been thinking about this kind of stuff a lot. Um, and how it can, I mean, especially in the wake of the sort of death of Twitter. Um, because Twitter is a weird place. Twitter is a place that is that is rapidly become, it already was a really negative place to begin with. I mean, if you go back to the very beginning of my channel, one of my first videos that I ever posted on my channel was talking about how negative uh, Twitter is and how to navigate that, how to like change the way that you engage with Twitter. Um, but it's become a place that is truly a nightmare. Um, and it's not the only social media that's like that at all. Of course, Facebook had similar issues with people, um, completely, uh, uh ruining their lives via Facebook engagement. Um, but, um, let me explain an example of something that I've seen happen, okay? And the speed at which it can happen because of the way that the internet exists right now. So on Twitter, okay, I'm gonna use Twitter as an example. On Twitter, there will be a propagandist, okay? You can put whatever the fuck propaganda you want to put in there, okay? A propagandist, okay? And this propagandist might already have a pretty large platform that propagandist uh, can get boosted because of algorithms that are completely out of the control of the vast majority of users. The no one, no one user can impact how the algorithms operate. It's decisions above them. So all these people, all these average everyday users are spending their time and energy and thoughts and mental space on a website that they have no say in, they have no meaningful control over. This propagandist can have their words boosted out in all kinds of ways that the users have no say in. Um, and then many users who are frustrated by the fact that they don't have any say in the fact that this horrible, heinous propaganda is getting pushed around, um, will try to react to it to the degree that they start to feel an obligation an obligation to push back or to fight back against the propaganda, the propaganda that's being artificially uh, selected by an invisible algorithm or a semi-invisible algorithm that they have no say over. And in the process, they they basically elect themselves as the guardians of, of the space in one way or another uh, to the degree that they're their lives increasingly become incro uh, 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 their their lives become increasingly um, overshadowed by the need to counteract something that they have no say in, and it affects them. It hurts them. It makes sense why you would want to push back on that, but but they end up just boosting the thing. You spend time debunking it, you spend time pushing back, and the thing gets seen by more people. And those people feel the need to push back on it because it affects them. And then it gets boosted more. And so all of a sudden, it's it's this propaganda has spread into all of these different people's lives who all 
are affected by it and who all feel the need to push back on it, but who increasingly then boost it to other people. And it creates a, a whirlwind of negativity, a true maelstrom of negativity, of hurt, of radiating pain. Um, I've talked about this before that like I, I, I talk about how like one of the things that frustrates me about social media, especially when it goes really bad, is that the average user shouldn't have like there. It doesn't make sense that the average user should have an expectation that they are going to be served, um, uh, uh, you know, deranged and hateful propaganda. And they have no real control over that. But. I'm not just talking about political opinions either, because I think there are forms of propaganda that like amount to like some level of just like, I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about like people are being exposed on a regular basis to the types of political propaganda that mirrors that that was going on in Nazi Germany. People talking about uh, mass death, people uh, 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 invoking, um, like mass arrests about about their identity group or their racial group or whatever and that's a deranged thing for a lot of people to experience and a lot of people do experience it and a lot of people feel compelled to push back against it and yet they can't because they don't control that platform and in a world where more and more time is spent on social media and that social media is hijacked by this type of propaganda by this by this maelstrom of negativity um it rips people's souls apart it rips people's minds apart and what's worse is that it like has this kickback effect of increasingly making people more generally hostile to the degree that nobody can communicate with each other in any real way and their connections in the real world have started to dissolve because obviously so many people are online and we just went through a pandemic which made it very hard to keep connections in the real world going on. So everything is being facilitated through these maelstroms of negativity, of just horrible negativity. And of course, lots of people talk about um, Lots of people talk about misinformation, but I'm not just talking about misinformation. I'm talking about just pure hostility, just interpersonal hostility. I'm not even getting going to get into bots. I'm not even going to get into like misinformation and conspiracy theory because we're going to talk about that a little bit in, well, we're actually going to talk about that in the next sections, but uh, the negativity is severely messed up. Does anybody here, I'm just going to ask real quick. There are two rules, two solid rules that I repeat all the time in this community. I want you guys, can you tell me the first and second rules of this community? The ones that I say all the time? I know my chat will be able to do it because I repeat them all the time. Of course, the first rule, do not die. The one rule, do not fucking die. And the second one, right there, we have commands for it. Imps raid with love. Imps raid with love. Do not die to imps raid with love. And previously, I even had a thing called the imps code, though I don't even bother with the imps code anymore because Twitter is just, a, it's gone. Um, it's, it's a gone space. And I've been thinking lately a lot about, um, about these spaces these these social media spaces and the 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 fact that people perceive community in these spaces and how it's a ghost there isn't really community in any of these spaces people come and go at will people become familiar with certain users in some ways um but to no real lasting way there's no meaningful and lasting connections between a lot of between the majority of users and the spaces aren't even built by those users often those spaces are cultivated by invisible algorithms that nobody has control over um they're a completely different thing 
than any sort of community engagement that has pre that has existed prior. I mean, hell, even in the days, even in the early days of the internet, um, where there was a forum, a forum was a solid, specific place that a very, usually a very limited number of users would go to. There was a a, a continuity of the people who were there, even if it was less continuity than a place like a local bar. There was continuity. And of course, people have made connections and people have formed some communities that like sort of uh, hub, like, you know, exist or hover above these social media things. But um, these social media tools don't facilitate those communities with very few exceptions. Um, in, in, in around my channel, there is a strong community of the imps and that was a deliberate decision. I wanted to make sure that there was a, and even that is limited, keep in mind. And I'm very, you know, I tend to be very open about how limited that is, but there is like, I make it easy for people to find one another. I have a website chat that people can go to. And some of this is just my old fashioned way of using the internet. I have a website chat because it makes a single static location with fairly static usernames that regular people show up to and can get to know each other. They can become familiar. They can connect beyond the chat room. They can get to know each other as the living beings that exist behind the names and the avatars, you know? Um, and that, that took a deliberate, you know, you know, series of decisions, but, but, most places like uh, uh, like most YouTube channels don't have that same type of thing. Some do. Um, and certainly, you know, most of social media doesn't facilitate that sort of thing. Uh, they mostly facilitate brands and brand identity, um, which is a different thing than a sort of community that is autonomous and has individual moving members. Um, People are horrible to each other. Like, not just lightly mean. I'm not just saying, oh, they called each other stupid or whatever. No, people are monstrous to one another in these spaces. And one of the reasons um, that I've made so many uh, changes to my channel in you know recent memory, that I've, I've made a lot of changes to the way that I go about making content, um, and the people that I, the, the events and the things that I participate in, you guys probably noticed that most of my content these, this, these days is just me, you know? It's me talking to you all about whatever I'm interested in. And uh, I don't go and do a whole bunch of uh, shows and, and other things like that. Not because I think like there's like, like everybody's bad or whatever, but because I think that like um, the, the, communities that I perceived as existing when I first arrived here proved to be non-existent and proved to uh, largely be uh, uh, highly manipulative ways of people making money off of other people. Um, and that's fucked up. And also ways of people farming targets for their abuse, uh, which is really, really fucked up. And of course, yeah, Nuts is talking, Nuts mentions doxing and swatting became a thing like 10 years ago. Yeah, that's something that didn't really exist prior. And now it's like a thing that's really commonplace to the degree that like, um, you know, every single person who gets even a tiny drop of fame, quote unquote, uh, has to take precautions, severe, serious precautions to prevent doxing and swatting which it just speaks to the deranged level of behavior that a lot of people engage in on the internet. The internet in its current form is really, really bad for a lot of people. And it's really, really bad for us, like us who make stuff. And it's really, really bad for a lot of you. And it makes me really fucking sad. And I don't know that there's, I don't know all the answers about it. I don't know if there's a single answer to this, but it's something that I want people to think about. It's something I want to talk about and think about with my community. Um, because I will say this, um, my community 
the people who I see show up to my streams on a regular basis, the people who support my stuff, you guys really make it worth worth the while for me. Um, it's uh, I've dealt with some really deranged stuff since I became a streamer, like really messed up stuff from people that I like from people that I just, I have no reason. Like I can understand having beef with somebody. I can understand going back and forth to a certain degree with somebody. Like obviously, like if you piss somebody off, you, they might get mad. You might go back and forth. You might insult each other a little, but that's not the type of stuff I'm even talking about. I'm talking about just, you guys, I've had manifestos written about me. That's fucking crazy. That shit's crazy, okay? And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that like, the whole imps raid with love thing was my tiny attempt to hopefully encourage people to think more about actually engaging in constructive and helpful ways with other people and to keep it in people's mind primarily um, that no matter the conflict, even when we're fighting with people with very few exceptions, obviously there are some examples of people that we can't denounce enough, you know, um, like I have no, I have no reservations about how horrible, you know, some of the political figures that we've talked about on this show are people who are actively advocating for genocidal policies. No, obviously those people are enemy, but I'm talking about random people that we engage with other creators, other people in these spaces. I want to encourage people to be careful, to think about the humanity of other people they're engaging with. And all of this is to say that I really, really appreciate the fact that there are people uh, who take the time to say kind things about the stuff that I do, um, that there are people who actually appreciate what I do, that there are people who have sent me art. There are people who have sent me art that they made with their hands, the paintings in the background, the, the, the patches, you know, um, like I... I'm really thankful for that. And it reminds me that no, actually it's not like the internet isn't a completely lost place yet. That there are a lot of people who do care and who do actually want to build a uh, healthy, meaningful, uh, you know, rational relationships with one another online and who can appreciate, uh, the humanity of their of the people that they engage with, the humanity of the creators that they watch, of the video makers that they watch. Uh, I really, really appreciate that a lot. And uh, I have been making a consistent effort to engage. You guys have probably seen this, especially those of you who've been around since the old days, that for a long time I've been making, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, my throat's getting a little dry. Pardon me. Um, that I've been making a long time effort to try and um, focus on positive engagements, positive comments, to focus on things that I care about, whether it's birds or movies or video games or, you know, politics of solidarity, community, in, you know, interaction and how people can build each other up more, more effectively. Um, there's a lot of negativity on the internet and some of it is just so deranged that, uh, I, it's constantly on my mind, uh, uh, the like, the like question of like, is, is all of this really worth it? Like, is it worth it for me to put myself out there in a way that subjects me to such deranged behavior that doesn't just direct, uh, you know, uh, subject me to deranged behavior, but also the people who are at attached to me. Is that like, I just look at the way that people treat each other, the ways that people lie about each other, the, the, and, and, it, and it's never just tiny things either. It's like these just un people go unbelievably far for people that they, that they don't even have, like, they aren't even taking the time to analyze 
the difference in relationship and like whether or not there's actual harm that's been done between them. There's perceived slights. I have I have had people who have basically declared me as their personal enemy for nothing. For literally because they disagreed with my opinion on one thing and then they took that to be something else and then and it became like a crusade for them where a significant portion of their life is obsessing about me. Like I, it's constantly in my mind, like, oh my God. And I gotta say, the thing that keeps me going is the fact that there are people out there who really appreciate what I do. That what I, that the jokes that I make, the videos that I go through, even when we're being a little mean, and I try to keep it cool, you know? You know, I do call some people stupid sometimes. I do call them a little deranged sometimes, usually when they're going really off the shits. But uh, we keep it at a certain level, you know? And also, that as far as my community is concerned, that we encourage other people, that we boost other people who are good, and that we focus on those people. Um, well, see, nuts, that's the thing that I'm talking about. Like, Tim Pool. <laughs> Tim Pool is uh is not exactly uh he, Tim Pool isn't your average person. He's not your average internet user. Tim Pool has a massive 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 platform and he uses it to push dis disgustingly hateful propaganda. I mean, this is the guy who was doing immediately after a obvious uh hate motivated shooting was jumping on board it to immediately do anti-LGBT propaganda. Just raw hatred. I'm not going to mince words with somebody like that, but I really try to be very careful about the people that I'm mean to, you know? And I think you guys see that uh, because I really do. I really fucking... I choose my battles really carefully, you know? Really, really carefully. And not only that, but I have deliberately surrounded myself with people who've been willing to to, to check me. Even if I don't always 100% agree with them, you know? Anyway. I want people... I want people to change the way that they engage with the internet. I really, really, really would love to see a world where we, where we change the, the state of affairs, where uh, we move away from things like TikTok, we move away from these algorithms that feed you content in a single stream, we move away from allowing algorithms to decide our social spaces, and that, that we move back just a little bit maybe just a tiny bit of a recalibration to using the internet as a place where we go to facilitate a better version of our real lives. That the internet doesn't become the end destination for everything that we do. And believe me, I'm not exaggerating how many people do come to the conclusion that nothing really matters outside of the internet because they're, so much of their life is on the internet. But, um, the real world is where we have to live. It's where you're going to uh, be, it's where you're born and it's where you're going to die. The internet is a virtual space and it will never be anything but a virtual space. And it connects and interfaces with the world, um, but it can't be the world. It will never be the world, no matter how much uh, they try to sell it to you and when I say they, I mean this, the people who own these social media sites, Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, uh, I can't remember the Reddit CEO, all these people. I want to be clear about that because uh, you know how people use the word they. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to be very specific about that. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if we don't change this, it actually it actually does threaten our entire like social existence. Um, people are miserable on the internet right now. They're very very miserable, and they don't have to be. 
Uh, you, one of the comments I receive so frequently on my stream is that people come to my stream and they walk away feeling better about their day, which makes me really happy. I like being making people laugh a lot. Like it really makes me feel good to make people laugh. I like the idea that I can make somebody's day easier at a job that's hard for them. Um, but I always want my space to be making your real life better. I want my space to be uh, encouraging people to look at their world around them differently, to, to, to learn about birds, to make new friends, to connect with people, to think about things differently. And uh, I'm just one voice on the internet, really. Um, so I don't know, you know, but I have a voice. I have some level of voice. There are 400 of you that show up to listen to me talk, and that means the absolute world to me. And I want you to know that I take it seriously, the fact that you give me your time, that you tune into my signal, uh, and that, uh, and I want, I would love to have even more of you. I would love to have more people listen to my signal. Uh, but I always want, I, I want to use my little tiny platform as a little internet entertainer to make people's days better and not worse. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to continue to be very careful with the people that I'm harsh to. <laughs> I can't say I'm not going to make fun of, uh, of conspiracy theorists or that I'm not going to make fun of conservatives. I absolutely will. There is no, absolutely no way in hell I'm ever going to stop making fun of the movement, uh, that, uh, seems genuinely, uh, uh, devoted to ruining everybody's lives. I, I, I can't, I won't. Um, but what I can say is that my goal is always going to be to enhance your life, uh, in whatever little way that I can, uh, to bring you things that are valuable, to bring you those treasures that you can take back into your life, uh, and do something cool with. And I'm always going to encourage everyone in my community, all of you who are out there, all of you on my discord, all of you who hang out here, uh, in my chats to connect with one another to make friendships and real connections because th those connections are a lattice by which we can actually change the world. Uh, and I mean that. Uh, I, you guys all know, anybody who's been watching me for any length of time knows that um, despite my my bravado when it comes to uh, uh, to my beliefs, you know, I'm very opinionated about my beliefs. Despite my bravado and my uh, goofing around, when I, when somebody goes at me, I love to give them a nice dunk. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm totally into that. But you guys know, I don't take, I don't pretend that my channel is some kind of movement. However, however, there is one way in which even a YouTube community can have a small emulation of what a movement is you know, a, a social movement. And that is the way that it can build a lattice of connection and support. Um, in this community, I have watched people help one another in need. I have watched people support one another. I have watched people collaborate to bring new art into the world that was facilitated as a result of the connections formed in this community here. That's awesome. And I always want to encourage that. And I'm always going to thank everyone in this community who does that sort of thing. Um, and I'm always going to thank the people who support me, uh, of course, because you guys really make it a lot easier for me. And uh, it's a lot of work to make a show like this. It's a lot of emotional work, uh, but I want to keep doing it. And I want to do it in a way uh, that, um, that goes against the flow, okay? Because I'm going to be completely honest, a lot of content creators – a lot of YouTubers, video makers, streamers especially, their lives get eaten up by streaming, their lives get eaten up by the internet, and then they disappear. And uh, it's sad. I've witnessed it happen many, many times to very, very, very good people who uh, got completely absorbed uh, by the space, were throwing their heart into it, were getting abused on a regular basis, um, did not get the support that they truly deserved, and then disappear. And it's really sad, okay? I don't want that to happen. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, guys, uh, online negativity is a huge problem. And I don't just mean a general, like, people being uh, doomers. I mean people being really interpersonally horrible to one another. And I really want to encourage people to take a step back sometimes, especially given that we all just lived through a, and still are, for the record, living through a pandemic of incredible proportions uh, I want people to be kind, and I want people to connect with each other on a real level. And also, please remember that the internet can not, not, it not, it just, it is a matter of it cannot be the endpoint destination. No matter who tells you that idea, no matter how many algorithms want to serve you content all day, every single day, in an endless stream, it will never be an endpoint. You cannot eat e-food. You cannot breathe e-air. You cannot sleep on an e-mattress. You have to live in the real world. And we have to, we, we need to learn how to use the internet as a tool and not as a fake reality to live in. So. Killjoy 40k says internet fame is a hell of a drug. It's a, it's like Internet fame is like crocodile, okay? It's the one that makes your 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 the meat fall off your bones, okay? Uh, it 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 comes at a great cost and often with very little benefit. There are tons of people who become e famous and literally never gain anything from it. Um, I am very lucky in that uh, a combination of personal savvy and also very good people, such as white nervosa and others have helped me make it possible for my internet fame to actually turn into something productive for my life to turn into something that can fuel a better life for me and mine um that can actually sustain itself and also other people i pay a team i have a whole team of people you know uh this show has a very very small profit margin and in fact, some years, no profit margin at all because I'm immediately reinvesting stuff right back into the project, um, you know. And uh, I would really, really love to continue to grow this channel. By the way, we gained over a 1,000 subs in the last 30 days. Just so you guys are aware, this channel is definitely growing. So please keep commenting. Please keep pressing like. And do share the show with your friends, um, truly. Uh, because I would love to see this channel. I would, I would love a, a YouTube play button, okay? I would love to finally have a shot at a YouTube play button. And that can literally only happen if uh, people support my show and are willing to, you know, say nice things about it and whatever. Um, but uh, I don't even remember. I, I rambled off. The point is uh, a lot of people get internet fame and it just hurts them. I'm lucky in that while I have had a lot of pain come as a result of internet fame, I've also had a lot of wonderful, wonderful things. And you want to know something else? I'm going to go one step further. I happen to know for a fact that there are very, very few internet people uh, who receive the type of uh, loving creations that I do. I still, right now, have as my background one of the most flattering pieces of art that I have ever received that's about me, that was meant to encourage and be kind to me. In the background, right over there, you can actually see it right back there, is a, is a painting that was sent to me, that, a painting by a real person, a real artist, and another painting, one that was made inspired by me. And I can't even, whenever I'm feeling down, Oh, right here, I have patches that were made for me. Uh, in my Christmas tree, I have ornaments that were handmade for me. Uh, in my uh, downstairs, my mantle on over my fireplace is full of art that people in this community have sent to me because they felt that this show was valuable enough to them and made their lives better, that they wanted to make mine better by sending me something they made. And I can't even, like, it. it's overwhelming. It's fucking overwhelming, that type of, of, of positivity, and it means the world to me. And I know that not many people have that type of impact on people. I lose, I, it is very, very difficult for me 
uh, to stay positive about being a creator with all of the shit that I've been through. It's really, really hard, okay? And I mean that. Like, it's been, it's something I struggle with on a constant basis. And, uh, you know, I try not to overdo it uh, with telling people, like, the shit that I'm grappling with on a day-to-day -day basis. I try not to, like, you know, you know, sad post all the time or anything like that. But it is really, really hard. And it is really, really hard right now especially because so much social media has turned into deranged, specifically anti-trans propaganda. And guess what, guys? I'm an open, very open, and very opinionated trans woman. And people talk about that all the time. It's a pretty fucking hard time to be trans. It's a really weird time to be trans and a public figure. All I'm saying is thank you all for those of you who support me. Thank you all for those of you who positively engage with this community and take care of other imps. Imps fucking watch out for other imps straight up. Uh, I want the imp community to become one of the most famously strong communities on, on the internet. It's a pipe dream maybe, but it would be something that I would truly believe in. And uh, if you found this interesting, press like and consider subscribing to the channel, seriously. And tell me your thoughts. I I would love to hear in the comments down below uh, what you all think about the internet, what you all think about your experiences on the internet, is the internet, where have you found positivity on the internet, and how do you deal with negativity on the internet? Tell me in the comments below, and as always, keep hearing the signal, okay?